Sunday school. Have you ever done something wrong and then got punished for it? Well, that's what happens in today's story. The people of Judah had turned away from following God and were worshiping false gods. God had been very patient and sent many prophets to warn his people. But finally, God decided it was time for his people to suffer the consequences of their wrong behavior. Before we find out what God did, let's spend some time in worship and praise. Will you join me? Eyes closed, head bowed. Gentlemen, hats off. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this morning, for a chance to get together to worship and to praise you and to see how you love us and care for us and that you are patient, but that there's a limit to your patience, but there is never a limit to your love. God, we thank you so much for this morning, and we just ask that you bless our time together in your precious and holy name. Amen. Psalms 40, 1 and 2. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock. The last four kings of Judah came from King Josiah's family. His three sons, Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah, and his grandson, Jehoiakim, each ruled as the king of Judah for a short time. Jehoahaz was not king for long. He did what was evil, and the king of Egypt came and made Jehoahaz a prisoner. The king stole silver and gold from Jehoahaz. Then he put Jehoahaz's brother, Jehoiakim, on the throne. The king of Egypt took Jehoahaz to Egypt. When Jehoiakim was king of Judah, he too did what was evil. The king of Babylon attacked Jehoiakim, made him a prisoner, and took him to Babylon. The king of Babylon stole some of the things from the Lord's temple and put them in his own temple. When Jehoiakim was taken away, his son Jehoiakim became king of Judah. 
Jehoiakim was king of Judah for just three months. He too did what was evil. The king of Babylon sent for Jehoiakim and brought him to Babylon. The king of Babylon made Jehoiakim's uncle Zedekiah king of Judah. Like his brothers, Zedekiah did what was evil. He led the people of Judah to do evil things too. The prophet Jeremiah warned Zedekiah that God would punish him, but Zedekiah did not listen. God was angry with the people of Judah. They sinned and did not obey God, but God loved his people. He wanted them to turn back to him. God sent prophets to warn the people, but the people did not listen. Finally, it was time to judge the people of Judah for their sin. God allowed the king of Babylon and his army to attack Judah. Many of the people died. The king of Babylon took everything out of the Lord's temple and carried it back to Babylon. Then the king and his army burned the temple. They tore down the wall around the city and burned the palaces. Anything that they did not take with them was destroyed. All of the people who were still alive were taken back to Babylon. The king forced them to be slaves. Everything the prophet Jeremiah had warned about happened, just like God said it would. God was right to punish his people for their sin, but he kept his promise to provide a king through David's family. Ultimately, God punished our sin through his son, Jesus, and made him our king forever. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Kai from St. Petersburg, Florida asks, I don't always pay attention at church because I get bored. Is this wrong? Kai, that's a great question. If you do get bored, you should think about why you are there. Why do you go to church? Well, we go to church to worship. God through singing and through the fellowship and service of being with others. So I want you to try to participate and remember why you go to church. Something that I found really helpful because even adults get bored sometimes is to pray for the ability to focus. If I'm at church and I feel like my mind is being distracted, I simply say, Lord, please help me focus right now while I'm at church worshiping and fellowshipping with other believers. The second thing, Kai, I'd love for you to do is to spend time preparing for church through the week so that you're more sensitive to the things that are taking place at church. And some trusted adults can help you think through that. A third thing that I'd love for you to consider is to take notes while you're at church, either doing Sunday school or doing the preaching, take notes. And if you're not that good of a note taker, are you still working on your handwriting? That's okay. Because if you can't take great notes, I want you to draw pictures as the pastor is preaching or as your Sunday school teacher is teaching, draw pictures describing what you hear them say. I think those will be some things that will really help you stay more focused during church. What are some steps you can take throughout the week to get you more prepared for church?
In the book of Deuteronomy, God promised he would bless his people if they worshipped and obeyed him. But if they disobeyed him, he would curse them. But God also promised, if they returned to following him, that he would again bless them. You see, God loves us and wants the best for us. And worshiping and following false gods is not good for us, and it leads to a painful life and eventual death. But believing and following Jesus not only gives us eternal life, but it gives our current life meaning and purpose. Let's spend this week seeking God and His will for our life. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye. Return to Jesus. Return to Jesus. I heard a sermon this Sunday. I heard the saints rejoice. But deep within my spirit,